understanding to the fear of the Lord. And let not any spirit, any power be able to steal the word from the heart of your people. And bless us, Lord. Let there be fruits, let there be increase and advancement to your glory indeed. We have prayed in the name of Jesus. So specifically, we're talking about walking in dominion, walking in dominion over these three aspects. Walking in dominion over sin, walking in dominion over sicknesses, walking in dominion over Satan. So we are going to look at these three aspects. These three aspects is not just these three, but it's just the foundation. The others follow. We have dominion over finance, over money. We have dominion over things that is not of God. Dominion over household wickedness. Dominion over territories. Dominion over things, over situations. God has given us that power as we listen, as we abide at his word, even now. Amen. So, dominion over sin, dominion over sickness, dominion over Satan are the three aspects I'm going to look about very quickly. And as the Spirit of God helps us tonight, we will end prayerfully, we will end in prayer for the Spirit of God to refill us and equip us and empower us for the days, for the years ahead to His glory and to His kingdom. Amen. So, dominion over sin, dominion over sickness, dominion over satan so dominion over sin i will look at that first so these three aspects of dominion we see here the end of it it can lead to death dominion over sin if someone doesn't have dominion over sin sin can lead to death if someone doesn't have dominion over sicknesses sickness or diseases can lead to death if someone doesn't have dominion over satan hey we know who he is the bible says is he comes to steal, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There's nothing good about him. The end is death, destruction. So, as children of God, we must walk in this dominion the Lord has given unto us. So, we are looking at these three aspects of dominion. So, the first one, which is dominion over sin. Dominion over sin. If you have your Bible with me again, you can look at this with me. Romans chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14. I will read very quickly as the Spirit of God directs and leads. I might not be able to speak or talk about each verse, but let the Spirit of God speak to your heart in quietness. Amen. Dominion over sin. Romans chapter 6 verse 1 to 14. There you are. You can see this verse 14. You can paraphrase it with these words with me. Sin shall not have dominion over me. You can say that to yourself. Sin shall not have dominion over me, for I am under grace. The question is, is it possible to live a life without sin? Is it possible to live a life without sin, even as a child of God? <laughs> is it possible? Let's look against John, the letter of St. John, chapter 3, from verse 7 seven to nine let's look at this as the spirit of god speaks little children first letter of saint john chapter three from verse seven to nine he said little children let no one deceive you he who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous he who sins is of the devil he who sins is of the devil for the devil has sinned from the beginning are we hearing for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. 9, verse 9. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he had been born of God. I repeat this last verse. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed, for his seed, the seed of God remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. God. Hallelujah. So this is so strong from this passage, the letter of St. John to the church. See, who, when we are in Christ Jesus, as we accept Christ into our lives, the first dominion the Spirit of God gives us is that dominion over sin. Is that power over sin. That hatred over sin. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 19, because that has loved righteousness and hated iniquity. 
the Lord God has anointed you with oil of gladness above your fellow companion. So God has given us that grace to have that hatred for sin. That is one of the signs when you accept Christ into your heart, when the Lord Jesus comes into your heart, when you live a life of a life of consecration unto God, you find that you that that appetite for sin goes away. And if there is nothing in your life as a child of God, whether for 10 years or 2 years or how many years you've been in Christ, you've been a Christian and there is nothing you can boast of that you've left behind as a child of God, you are not yet transformed. You are not yet transformed. If there is something in your life that you can't you, 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 you can boast of that you've left in the past, and you know you left that thing in the past because you are now serving the Lord, you are now in Christ, then you are not yet transformed. Because that difference must be there. That difference must be clear. That first letter of St. John, chapter 3, verse 9, if you read down to verse 10, he said, In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. The difference must be clear as you come to Christ. If you look at the Gospel of St. John, John Gospel, chapter 8, the woman that was caught in the very act of, the, of adultery, when the woman was accused and she was brought to Jesus, and Jesus spoke to the men, the people that brought her, and asked them, if any of you have not seen, let it be the first to throw stones at her. And the Bible says each of them left because they were, they were convicted of their consciences. They left. Each of them, all of them left. And behold, the woman was left alone with Jesus. If you look at that, John Gospel chapter 8, verse 10, and 11. Jesus now looked at the woman and said, where are the accusers? And the woman said, no, they've left. They've all left. They've all gone. And Jesus looked at the woman and said, go and sin no more. In verse 11, he said, go and sin no more. Neither do I condemn you. If you look at that story, you will see that that woman was changed forever. Hallelujah. That woman was changed forever. She never it was never mentioned in the scripture that she went back to her former lifestyle anymore. Yes, she was an adulterer. Yes, she committed the sin. But the Lord Jesus forgave her. She was completely forgiven. Who could do that except God? And he said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. It's an empowerment to have dominion over sin. And behold, that woman was one of the women, was one of the uh, women Jesus appeared to when he resurrected. Hallelujah. So we must understand this, that God has given us dominion and power over sin. Amen. So if as a child of God, you are struggling with sin, you are still struggling and addicted to a particular kind of sin, I understand, the Spirit of God understands that some individuals, when they come to Christ, they don't easily give up some things. Gradually, as the Spirit of God convicts, people drop some things down out of their life. But I want to tell you tonight, the Spirit of God can help you it might be weakness in one area of your life or the other. The Spirit of God can help you. That is why we continue to fellowship in the world. That is why we continue to listen to messages like we are listening tonight now. Amen. So God has given us that grace to live above sin. For he says, for sin shall not have dominion over you as a child of God. So even if you find yourself in sin, do not waste time. You go back and cry to God for mercy. That was what kept David as a king. That was why God established his covenant forever with David. Because David has the word of God in his heart. He said in Psalm 119 verse 11, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I, that I will not sin against you. It was the word of God that kept David from sin. Yes, David sinned and David sinned. He slept with someone's wife. He committed murder. Look at the kind of sin he committed. It was so deep. But when the word of God came so strong to David, David repented of his sin. He cried from his heart, and God heard that cry, and God forgave him. He said, the humble and contrite heart, thou you will not spawn. David has a heart for God, and that heart was because the word of God was living inside of him. Amen. So the word of God was what kept David alive and kept David strong and continually live a life of dominion, a life of victory, and he never lost any battle as a king. Amen. So... The next one is dominion over sicknesses. Jesus has given us power or dominion over sicknesses. If you look at Luke chapter 9, verse 1, and Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. 
Luke chapter 9, verse 1, and Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. He said, Jesus called his disciples together, then he gave them power and authority. In that of Luke chapter 9, verse 1, he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. In that of Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, he said, he gave them power against unclean spirits and to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and diseases. Amen. So, Jesus has given us power over sicknesses, over sicknesses, over Satan, over demons, over the works, over the works of the devil, over any powers of darkness. Amen. So we must understand this, we must come to this knowledge that God has given us that power over sicknesses and diseases. Sicknesses, don't forget, some sicknesses can lead to death. Is not your portion. The story of Lazarus in John Gospel chapter 11 reveals that to us, that Lazarus was sick to the point that he died. But thank God for the appearance of Jesus. Thank God for the appearance of Jesus who came to reveal and manifest the glory of God. And Lazarus came back to life. For Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And he's still the resurrection and the life, even as you are listening tonight. Amen. So, you must understand this, that in the word of God itself again that can give us power over sicknesses and disease if you look at proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 to 24 i am a living testimony of that since i was born i was given birth to i used to fall sick a lot i fall sick like almost every three weeks after i got filled with the holy spirit after i was saved the spirit of god led me to the scriptures i never joke with the scriptures I knew how God break that sicknesses out of my body and up till now I don't easily fall sick. What kept me the secret was the word of God. I live in an atmosphere of the word of God every minute, every moment, every time. Yes, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 to 22. My eyes was open to this. It says, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 to 22. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. I don't know whether anyone here listening, you are following me, you are reading the scriptures with me. There is an anointing while reading the scriptures. There is the presence of God to individuals, not to everybody. There is the presence of God that just come over you when you are reading scriptures. In the quietness of your heart, the atmosphere, so conducive for the presence of God. Verse 22, do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Nobody can steal it there once it's in your heart. Then the last verse 22. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. So God has given us power and dominion over sicknesses and diseases. It's possible for a child of God to live a sickness free life. You can have dominion over sickness. And even if that sickness is still living or manifesting in your body, the word of God says it shall not have any power over you. Even as you are hearing the sound of my voice and this ministration, that sickness in your body, that sickness in your body, whether in your spirit, whether in your soul, shall not have power over you. Shall not have power over you. For the resurrection and the life, the resurrection and the life is here. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever is here. Amen. So the last aspect of dominion is dominion over Satan. Dominion over Satan. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 19. He said, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us when we use your name. They were so happy for the first time they cast out demons. They were so excited. And he said to them, that Jesus said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Haya Baba. Jesus gave them power already to cast out demons, to heal the sick. And they came back and they were testifying. Haya Baba. Because of time, I don't want to talk much about this. This is so interesting. Jesus is always in the spirit when you always look at him. Look at some people coming to testify about what the spirit of the Lord has done. These demons submitting to us. Instead of Jesus saying, ah, tell me more, tell me more, let me hear about it. Instead, what did he say? While he was listening to them, he just said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And he looked at them. He said, behold. I give unto you power to tread on serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Who speaks like that? 
Someone who is much kinder will look at this. Ah, this man, what is wrong with him? He's not even listening to what the apostle is telling him. Look at what he's saying. Because it's in the spirit. Amen. So God has given us that power and dominion over all powers of the enemy. Amen. He has given us power over serpents and scorpions. In any form, they manifest themselves. And over all the powers of the enemy. And he said, nothing shall by any means hurt us. So we must live that life. We must live that life of dominion over sin, over sicknesses, and over the devil, over Satan. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we must continually take authority over demons when we yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit and God's voice, even in His word. Yes, and we must stay constantly filled with the Holy Spirit. Constantly filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That takes us in few minutes we are going to pray in few minutes we are going to submit our spirit all that we are to god and let god renew us and let god fill us again tonight with his power with his spirit in the name of jesus walking in this god-given dominion make kingdom growth and advancement easy and unstoppable walking in this god-given dominion make kingdom growth and advancement easy and unstoppable acts of the apostles chapter 1 verse 8 but you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and to the end of the earth so god wants us to have that dominion and advance indeed from that acts of the apostles chapter 1 verse 8 that is what the spirit of god is saying through that passage tonight as you look at it with me as you open your eyes to see in the spirit with me in the name of Jesus, even as we pray tonight, God has opened his hand to lay, his, to lay it upon our head tonight again to fill us, to empower us in the name of Jesus. So any entrance to your kingdom dominion and advancement must be arrested and judged as we pray. The next five minutes we are going to pray. Any entrance to your kingdom advancement, to your kingdom dominion must be arrested and judged as we pray. This prayer doesn't end yet. Continue to pray. We are praying again tomorrow. We are ending in prayer. And when we come back, we are praying again. We can't be tired of praying. The Spirit of God is here. The power of God is here. As we pray, Karabakatanda, as we pray, even in the Spirit, a soul will be arrested on his way to Damascus. In the name of Jesus, two possible things happen. Yes, a soul will be arrested on his way to Damascus. And an error will be smitten by the angel of the Lord in the name of Jesus. This is what happened in Acts of the Apostles when these men raised up their head to obstruct the growth and advancement of the kingdom of God and to hinder, obstruct the dominion of the children of God. God himself arrested Saul on his way to Damascus. Jesus appeared to him and stopped him while he was going to persecute the children of God. When God arrested him, he became a kingdom builder, a kingdom transformer. He was the one who, who wrote almost half of the New Testament. The Apostle Paul, who was changed from Saul. God can do that tonight as we pray, as a church, in the name of Jesus. And that of Herod. Herod, if you look at Acts of the Apostle chapter 12, the Bible says that Herod killed James. He cut off the head of James and he was excited. He was happy. And the Jews were encouraging him. They were celebrating. And he went ahead. And he hold Peter. He arrested Peter. And he put Peter in jail. Expected to put Peter to death the following day. Kayabaka. And the Bible says in verse 5, And the church gathered together. In one accord they begin to pray. And the Bible says, And prayer was made for Peter without ceasing. Prayer was made by the church for Peter without prison. Without, with, without ceasing. Hey, ha, rabba, baba, da, 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 rabba. In the name of Jesus, the angels of God was released onto that prison. The angel of God was released onto that prison. And Peter stood up. And Peter stood up. And he listened to the angel. He obeyed what the angel told him and he followed the angel. The angel said, Follow me. Ah, the angel said, Follow me. And when he followed him, the gates were opening. And Peter came out miraculously. Miraculously. It was not a dream. The Bible said, Peter thought it looks like a dream. It was like a dream. Even the people who were praying, when they saw him, they said, this is ghost. It's the ghost of Peter. Hiya, Baba. It's the ghost of Peter. They ran back inside. It's not Peter. Why they were praying? 
Karababa. But my but what the spirit of God reveals to me, despite that some don't didn't have that faith, some still have that strong faith. I saw some other brethren were still inside praying in the spirit. Some were praying in the spirit. I saw someone quoting Psalm Hayababa. Siya mana mana. He said, Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Peter was talking to them. Why, why, why they finally allowed Peter to enter inside? Peter now told them his testimony and left and went to another city and left that area. Do you know saying prayer was still going on? They didn't stop praying. They didn't stop praying. They didn't stop praying. Those who saw Peter physically, those who didn't see him, those who hear about it, they didn't stop praying. Ah, rapa papa te, i kanamakas kapaha, rapa katunda repa baba, e katumata pata pata, e rapa katunda rabaka. Ah, ah, in the name of Jesus. And the angel of God appeared again. The angel of God appeared again to that same Herod, to that same Herod who wanted to kill Peter. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 12, verse 23, the Bible says, and Herod was smitten by the angel of the Lord, and he was eating of worms, and he gave up the ghost. And he gave up the ghost. That is the portion of any wish, any wizard tonight, anyone that is saying no to my demonion, anyone that is saying no to my personalized prayer, anyone that is saying no to my dominion and advancement, oh God, judge them tonight. Anyone that is saying no, or that will say no to my dominion, to my advancement, oh God, judge them tonight. Oh God, by your spirit, by your power, judge them tonight. Oh God, by your spirit, by your power, judge them tonight. Even by your fire, judge them tonight. Judge them tonight. In the name of Jesus, let them come to an end. Let them come to an end. Let them be cut off. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ah, rapa katunda, repa papa te, rakata ta 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 ta, e rapa papa tunda riba papa. E kata kabaka sunda raba, e kata kabaka sunda, e kabaka sunda raba ka, e gadogo bo sunda raba baba ba, e taba baba yeke bo sunda raba, e daga baba baba. In verse twenty four of that Acts of the Apostles chapter twelve, ah, after Herod died, was smitten by the angel. The word of God said, and the word of God grew and multiplied. Aya baba, and the word of God grew and multiplied, and the word of God grew and multiplied, and the word of God grew and multiplied. Holy Ghost, fill me tonight. Holy Ghost, fill me tonight. Open your mouth and ask him to touch you. Ask him to lay hands upon you. Ask him to come upon you tonight. Ask him to fill you tonight like never before. Ask him to empower you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of fear be cast out. Let the spirit of doubt be cast out. Let the spirit of bondages be broken. Let the yoke of captivity be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says you are the head and not the tail. It's what say wherever you place you, wherever you place your feet, He has given it unto you as a portion and as for inheritance. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, eta bata bata lepo kusoto riba baba e daga bas kapakate lepo kusoto rika baba ba mata tata rika tunda riba ba santuria e raga ba santu e da bata bata e da bata bata e da bata Eda bata, eda bata bata, eda bata bata, eda bata bata. Adu gada gada, adu gada gada, adu gada gada. Asia na na na, eda kubaka te lipo kusoto. Ika na mama mama asia, eda kubaka sintoria. Eria mono kusunda rabakunda, e la paka sunda rebaka asia. Eda baba baba santori baka tele, e li paka soto. Ya gaba kasaka, la paka sunda. Eke ne me ke si karabako boku shanda. La pa ka sin tarabako boku soto. Yere boku soto. Yara ba 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 ba. Oh, ria ba ka te ka ba san tarabako boku shanda ya. I worship you, Holy Spirit. I bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Almighty God. Hallowed be your name. Your dominion is forevermore. Almighty God, oh, hallowed be your name. Your dominion is forevermore. Amen.
Lift up your hands, says wherever you are. Just lift it to the Lord in adoration and worship. El Shaddai, Hayabaka Sundaraba, who I worship you from the depth of my heart, King of glory, Son of God, Lord Jesus Christ, you are so good. Almighty God, Father, hallowed be your name. Your dominion is forevermore. We receive it tonight. We receive your empowerment tonight. We receive your enablement tonight. In the name of Jesus, we shall not be held captive anymore by any spirit, by any power, by any sickness, by any disease, by any power of darkness, by the spirit of witchcraft, by any territorial spirit, in the name of Jesus, let lose their own, let lose the authority over our lives, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' holy name we have prayed. Amen. Surely.